Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to succeed when 3D printing on Garolite. If you've ever printed with high temp materials like nylon, polycarbonate, or even PETG, you're definitely aware that it has some ability to warp. But there are some higher end printers that use Garolite to print those materials without warping, without heat, pretty well. And you don't really see Garolite that often despite that. However, now it's becoming a little more common, and you can even get just a full sheet of Garolite pretty easily, which you can just clamp to your bed or even use an adhesive to keep it on your bed. Or you can get a thinner sheet of Garolite and attach that to the flex plate system. So you can take it off, flex it, and get your parts off, but they hold really well in the middle of printing. But there are some steps you will want to take and little tips and tricks here and there that makes printing on Garolite work a lot better. So let's dive into those. First off, while printing with PETG or nylon on Garolite without heat can work pretty well, it doesn't hurt to have a heated bed just like with PLA. Heated bed will just further ensure that your parts actually stick. Sometimes I've found that 55 degrees Celsius is just enough to get a really good hold. Other times I've tried 70 Celsius and that's worked really well too. So a brief explanation of what Garolite is, is it's a fiberglass weave with some epoxy resin that really sandwiches it all together, but it gives it enough of a texture for nylon to want to stick and bind into it. Just enough for the parts to stick, but also be able to come off after the print is done. Before you start getting adventurous and printing all the big parts and intricate parts on Garolite, you're going to want to do some calibrating, and that comes in the form of your Z offset. So you're going to want to print just a calibration cube, test it with no Z offset, see how that's working, and if you have baby stepping enabled, you can turn that on and just move it further from the bed, closer, depending on what will make it stick best. Now, you don't want it too close to the bed, because what I've had happen is the part prints really well, but then it fuses to the bed, and, and that's it. You, you gotta get a razor blade, carve underneath it, and take some of the Garolite off with the print, and then you permanently have a reminder of that failure, and your part is just ha has a shadow left in the Garolite. So in that case, my Z offset was too low, but you learn. So once you get your Z offset tuned, you should be able to get your part to the sticks of the bed well enough that it doesn't warp, but also be able to be removed after you're done printing. However, if it's not sticking as well as you'd like, you can always use some PVA glue stick, just smear it on the bed a bit. I like to do a cross hatch where I do some this way and then some the opposite direction, and that gives it a good enough hold to really hold down to the part. And then when the part comes off, you can really see just how well it sticks based on the pattern that it leaves on the bottom of the part. And on top of that, it's PVA, so you can just wash it off in the sink with no problem. And that about covers it. 3D printing on Garolite isn't much more difficult than printing on any other printing surface. So whether you have a Pulse XE, which comes with Garolite stock, or you buy a sheet and clamp it to your printer, either way, you have a great next step in being able to print high temperature materials. What are some of the surfaces that you guys are printing on? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.